Every day that you wake up, remember someone else did not. You are alive for a reason. Those voices in your head telling you to turn back, telling you that they'll fail. But I've failed in the past. I fell flat on my face. Listen to me. You can't have a better tomorrow if you're too busy thinking about yesterday. In times of adversity, you do not have an obstacle to deal with. You have a choice to make. It's no different because we've messed up, because you fell off the wagon, you've been on alcohol and drugs, and you gave up on life, and you dropped out, or you've been to jail one time, two times, three times, and you really want your dream to happen, and you're putting in your work, and nothing's happening yet. I promise you, if you keep pushing, if you keep giving me all your effort, it will happen. No matter how far you have sunk, no matter how hard you have fallen, you've got enough grit, you've got enough grace, you've got enough faith, you've got enough courage to stand up. It's time to rise. I will rise. You have to rewrite the story you've been telling yourself so that you can step into a new level of abundance, a new level of peace, a new level of happiness. Understand, if you want to make your dreams a reality, you've got to understand that you can't quit. Believe you can win. Because we only get one shot at this, King. We didn't come this far to come this far. You can always start fresh. You can write a new chapter, or you can choose to write an entire new book. You have the power. You have the tenacity. You have the grit. This is that time. This is that hour. This is that moment. Life will bloody your nose. Life will leave you in a cardiac arrest. Life will leave you in an accident. Life will knock you upside your head and dare you to get back up again. Others may quit, but not me. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not ever. Because I gave too much of this dream. It's up to you to keep calm and believe in your purpose. Go after that dream. Quit playing small. You were meant to do great things. It ain't about being beast mode. It's about life and death mode. Life is always giving you a test. Trying to give you a way out. Trying to give you an excuse not to show up. You gotta have the mentality to show up every day of your life. No matter what life throws at you. It's our responsibility to show up to the Coliseum of life. Prepare for battle. I don't care what you're going through. What life's throwing at you, it's your responsibility to find your new 100%. A part of being a beast is the hunts. It's the hunt that they're excited about. They like to see the gazelles run. Then boom, they take off. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. Everybody want to be a beast. And it's time to do what beasts do. You are a beast. Let others talk about how good you are, how strong you are, how fast you are, how smart you are, how successful you are. That's when you know you're a shark, when others are talking about you. It's about putting it on the line. It's about pushing yourself and giving it 110% of everything you got. I know sometimes people say they're lying, but you can't be a lion if you don't understand the rules of the jungle. Keep your
commitment never to go back to the life that you once lived. Keep your commitment to creating wealth for yourself, to taking care of your children, to be more responsible. Keep your commitment to live a life of contribution, to keep your commitment to be a conqueror and to act like it and to have authority and dominion of everything in your life. What are those reasons I got on one of my tapes? If life knocked you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Your reasons will help you to get back up again. You're going to face no and rejection every day, but if you're hungry enough, the world will make a place for you. You're afraid of the f***ing effort. We're all being tested. And that road to success is a bumpy ass road. Do you think you have the mindset now? Beast mode! I would rather you confront, fight, and fail than for you just to settle for the comfort of remaining the same. Change is tough. But change is possible for some of you. The world's not going to become easier all of a sudden. No, as you mature, you're going to have more responsibilities, more things that people expect out of you. But the truth is, you can do hard things. The truth is, as long as there's breath in your lungs, there's hope in your heart. Ask yourself, what's my dream? What's my dream? You think you're just here to work on a job? Pay the bills, keep a roof over your head? A car note, and then die? Come on, give me a break. Raise the bar on yourself. Challenge yourself. Decide you're not going to be the same person. I want you to have the mindset that you're gonna live an expanded vision of yourself. And you're gonna go all in. I don't know your name, but I know you have a dream. You may be listening to me in your closet, your bedroom, the gym, the car, the bus, the train, the plane. I don't know where you're going, but I know you are going somewhere. You've got a destination. Keep a no excuse mentality. Then the sky is not your limit. The sky is your starting point. I never get turned off every single day. I want my destiny, I want my dream. You've got to have this vision of yourself beyond your circumstances. You've got to see yourself every day, I can do this, I can make this happen. I'm blessed and highly favored. Good things are supposed to happen to me. You've got to see yourself every day and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. You want to go somewhere you've never gone? You got to do something you've never done. You got to say something you've never said. You got to go to a place in you that you've never even been. You're not sentenced to this life this way. You chose it. It's gonna be a dog fight. When you get tired of being coined the loser, being coined not enough, being overlooked and undervalued and underpaid, you gotta get tired of that. When you get tired, that's when you win. Every single person that wins big, every single person that you look at, every single person that you're inspired by, every single person that you aspire to be like, they are gonna win or they are gonna die trying. They are somebody who is tired. Like when you come to the end of yourself, you gotta get tired. Something inside of you has to snap. You gotta get tired of being broke. It's going to be a dog fight. You got that dog. And your inner dog has no quit. I love dealing with a dude who think because he come from money, he better than me. Let's go. Let's go. You got money, but do you got that dog? Yeah, you got money, you got print, but do you got that dog? Hey, do you got that stamina? So yeah, you might have something I don't have right now, but if I work hard, I can have what you have. 
you gotta smell blood. Once you get that scent, like a hound dog, you get that scent. You see what is possible, you see what you are capable of. In the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, in the face of everybody that says you are not enough, you're not tall enough, you're not big enough, you're not wide enough, you're not fast enough. It's in that very moment that the dream's gotta get bigger than the disappointment. It's gotta get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream. There's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. How do you keep that dog mentality? Guess what? A true dog mentality? I'm a dog at home. I can feed that f***er all day long. He never gets full. It's not enough to make the NFL. Be the f***ing MVP. It's not enough to win a 5K. Win a 10K. It's not enough to became a doctor. Be a better doctor. It's not enough to lost 50 pounds. Go out there and do something with it. Guess what? It's 109 out here, but guess what? It's not enough. Stay hard. When we talk about a dog mentality, the dog scrambles, the dog barks, the dog runs after whatever it wants. When a dog is hungry, move out of his way! Because it's coming for blood! And the reason why you don't have what you want is because you are not hungry enough! Better get some dog in or you ain't gonna make it. Judge a person not by what they accomplished, but what they had to overcome for their accomplishment. People that are hungry have zero excuses for not pursuing their dreams. And they come back again and again and again. They operate like Willie Jolly, who said that a setback is a setup for a comeback. I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. You can get up. You can get up. You can get up. I'm training people to get into their greatness, to begin to develop the courage to pursue dreams beyond their comfort zones. Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. There's never a shortage of opportunities. It's just a shortage of thinking. Because some things are taught and some things are caught. When I was in the fifth grade, they put me back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade. I failed again in the eighth grade. I have no college training. So being identified and labeled as DT, the dumb twin, it, it gave me a, a lot of things to overcome. And so there was no one to dispute what was said about me, and I bought it. Even if you are told a lie, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. You hear it often enough, it becomes your reality. Perception, not challenge, becomes real for you. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. So if you can track failure, you can also track success. You have greatness in you. I don't know you, but here's what I know based upon my own experience. You have greatness in you, that you have the ability to do more than you could ever begin to imagine. You have greatness in you. There's a presence in each and every one of us that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only God you will ever have or hear. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. When you recognize your greatness, no one will ever pull your strings. You are different. You were created on purpose with a purpose to manifest that purpose through you. You will never exercise authority and dominion over your life until you exercise authority and dominion over what you are not. Most people go through life living the lie that has been told about them. There's something in you that's greater than your circumstances. There's something in you that's greater than the adversities that you're facing. In life, you're either in a problem, just left one, or headed toward one. You have greatness in you. Run towards your dream. I want you to know something. That the bigger your dream is, I want you to understand the harder to grind. Ask yourself, what's my dream? What's my dream? 
What are you willing to do that you've never done before? What are you willing to say that you've never said before? You got a dream to buy a house. You got a dream for better relationships. You got a dream to, to win a fight. You got a dream to get your family out of the hood. You got a dream to lose weight. I mean, whatever that dream is, whatever you have, that goal, that improbable feat. They should take sacrifice, blood, sweat, tears, absolute, total focus of, of pushing yourself. And if dreams and goals are coming easy, I submit to you, it's time for you to ratchet up what you're going after because you can achieve more. Start with nothing, high school dropout. Start with nothing, homeless. 12 years to get a four year degree from the university. Start with nothing if you are willing to grind. If you came from a place where you had nothing, that's everything that you need. I kept running toward my dream. Unreasonable results in your life like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny, you've got to be an unreasonable person. The dream's got to get bigger than the disappointment, than the fear, than the anxiety, than the overwhelm. It's got to get bigger, the dream. Once that dream gets bigger and you get a scent for that dream, you start to smell that dream, there's nothing on planet Earth that can stop you. You become armed and dangerous. You are the most dangerous individual on planet Earth. What do you do when you're not the only one that wants to make a million dollars in your company? You're not the only one that wants to be the president. You're not the only one that wants to be the CEO. What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You gotta outgrind them. You gotta get up earlier. You gotta stay up later. You gotta execute and you gotta go from 70. Don't let nobody steal your dream. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. What you hate, what you can't stand, what you want to walk out of, what you want to give up on, there is somebody out there that would die to be in your position. And so here's what I need you to ask yourself. Is this problem an issue or is it an opportunity? Some of you, all you've been waiting for your whole life was an opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you loved was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? I need you to see the bigger picture. I need you to have a little gratitude. You need to learn how to smile. You need to work out. I know you hate the gym. I know you hate to lift weights. I know you hate cardio. I know you don't like drinking water. I know you don't like taking care of your temple. You think it's the hardest thing to do in the world to commit. But there is somebody who's in the grave today. And if they had another opportunity to live, they would enthusiastically, with great confidence and courage and consistency, do what you hate just to live a little longer. Find the positive, see the bigger picture. Guard your gratitude. The trial, the tribulation, the adversity, the giant is not your assassin. The giant is your opportunity. Are you gonna complain in the face of conflict or are you gonna seize the opportunity? I don't care what it is that you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to give, how you're trying to evolve, what you are looking to become. Everything rises and falls on your perspective. Stop complaining about the jealousy and the envy and the backbiting and the person that gave up on you and the person that wasn't present and the person that lied to you and the person that attempted to manipulate and control. I'm not weary, I'm wiser. I'm not toxic, I'm triumphant. I see this thing differently. This season that you've entered into did not come to break you. It came to build you and to the man or woman God has destined you to be. Change your perspective. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do.
I never looked at things as problems. I look at them as opportunities. Who teaches you to be a man? Greatness is not something that you meet once. It's something that you meet thousands of times in your life and you don't reach it if you're not constantly in constant pursuit of greatness. The most powerful thing that we can be is ourselves. Dreams without goals are just dreams and ultimately they fuel disappointment. Those times when you don't feel like working but you do it anyway. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. You can't just say you want it. You can't watch the video and say, I want it as bad as I want to breathe. It's cute to say it. But when it's showtime, when the sun comes up, now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you're ready to hunt. It's a lifestyle. You don't hit the snooze button. You don't want to go run, you go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. You don't want to make your bed, you make your bed. You don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. You don't want to study, you study. That's how you start to callous your mind. That became my life. When you can't control what's happening to you, control how you respond to it. That's where your power is. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. Success is not a comfortable procedure. If you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill from regret. Not only do I want to be a beast, if you follow my 24 hours, I do what beasts do. Every day that you wake up, remember someone else did not. You are alive for a reason. Why on earth are you here? This is your day. You've got a window. You've got another 24 hours because you may not make it to tomorrow. And I'm just wondering what you're going to do with the day. The reason why days often feel meaningless and mundane is because we are directionless. You gotta get some direction. I'm just wondering what are you gonna do in this next 24 hours that you did not do? I'm just wondering if you're gonna level up two millimeters more than you did yesterday. Are you gonna get better? Are you gonna get stronger? Are you gonna get wiser? Are you gonna see this thing differently? I'm just wondering when are you going to see the power of 24 hours? that you did not have to wake up, that God did not have to give you another opportunity to be here, another opportunity to forgive somebody, another opportunity to let it go, another opportunity to look up and get up. I'm just wondering when are you going to seize the opportunity? Accept where you are. Get cognizant about your money. Get cognizant about your relationships. Where are you mentally? Where are you spiritually and emotionally and financially and economically? Are you driving what you are destined to drive? Where's your health? Where's your heart? Let's get aware of where we are. This is my day to read a new book. This is my day to start a journey. This is my day to make an investment. This is my day to invest in myself. This is my day and this is my time and it's my turn to crush this day. This is the day I learn like I never have. This is the day I invest like I never have. This is the day I take it seriously. I got one window. I may not be here tomorrow. I'm just wondering if you're gonna rise and see the opportunity. Get up, get up, get up. You've got a day to conquer. If the day's going to be good, I gotta heal from the mistakes that were made yesterday. I've gotta believe that I don't have to make the same mistakes. It's time to heal. Today I heal. Today I heal from every mistake that is made. 
Today I heal from everything that I said that I could have said better and everything that was said to me that I wish was never said. I heal today from the people that pushed me verbally but did not support me physically, that were never present. Today I heal, I heal, I heal. I heal from what I did not have. I heal from what I did have that I did not want. Today I heal. After we heal, we have to acknowledge what went wrong. What could I have done differently? What boundaries did I allow to be breached? Relationally, financially, with my investments, with my mindset. Where did I put my energy and I didn't get anything back in return? It's like investing in a vending machine with a sign on it that says out of order. And I'm convinced that many of us invest in people and places that are just simply out of order. And this is why we're drained. And this is why we're tired. And this is why we're weary and well-doing. And this is why the day is mundane and it's the same old, same old. Something's gotta change with you. I'm just wondering if you're gonna repeat the cycle. If the redundancy of mediocrity is going to continue, we've got purpose and we've got fulfillment and we've got destiny breathing down our necks. Let's accept the truth. This is the only way the day matters is if we get aware of what's happening and what's going on. What has my attention? Do I have the attention span of a toddler or a champion? Why is the truth so important? You have to have the truth to have a starting point. And your true self is found in that very uncomfortable zone. We all look for toughness. We all want it. But we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Those of you who are listening to this, you will not find it. The only way you find it is to drown yourself in a position where you're just out of sorts, where you can't swim and you're drowning. Where you're drowning. When you say, you know what, man? That. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. It's in our head saying, you know what, man? Dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're wasting a bunch of percentage here. In this other 80% is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness. And then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you gotta go through all of this shit. You're not succeeding, you're not achieving. It's because you're afraid to go in that dark place to find yourself. You're setting goals you know you can reach. And when you do that, that fear, that insecurity, that doubt, that's where you grow. You must always set goals that you think you cannot achieve. And in there you get better. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no, you just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. Every day, you must ask yourself, did I do enough? And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. I know what it's like to be an underdog. I know what it's like to be laughed at. I know what it's like to have a dream and have no one believe in you. It means nothing. It's all in your head. You see, these people, the ones who laughed at you or told you that you can't, they aren't you. 
They don't have to wake up every day and feel how you feel. They don't have to hate the reflection they see in the mirror looking back at them. They don't have to go to bed at night feeling empty because there's something they desperately want. That's you and that's on you. So do something about it. You weren't born to live a second rate existence. You weren't born to let your dreams, your hopes and your aspirations pass you by. You were born to fly. You have to go into 2023 with the mindset that you're going to win. That no one and nothing, not even your fears, can stop you from becoming the person you desire to become. Y'all want to work on your goals and your dreams, but you've been working all year round. So now, even though your internal dialogue is screaming for you to grind for something more, you just want to rest. It's time to step into the shoes you were meant to wear. It comes to us as the people. We may not all think the same, but we all have the ability to come together in love. No more will we submit. No more will we say we're done. You're not done yet. Your life is still here. You won't accomplish your goals by living in that glass cage you built around you that limits you from realizing your potential. So take the hammer, smash the glass, jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. You learn to fly before you fall. The time is now and you must follow through. I must take action. I must come up with a plan. I must execute that plan. I must give everything that I have and I cannot, will not stop until I achieve my goal. So get up. It's time to fight. Will it be easy? No, but nothing worth having ever came easily. Instead of the path of least resistance, I started choosing the path of most resistance to prepare myself for the journey that was coming my way. And you realize through hard work, you can outwork anybody. No matter how badass they are. It starts with yourself, man. You gotta start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you wanna do is go back to what gave you confidence, is that happy spot. No, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own. Realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence is not being afraid. It's overcoming the fear. That's what gives me confidence is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them and face them and face them pretty soon like this. You know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. Happiness, peace, enlightenment. It's all up here, man. It's all up here. It's yeah. all up here. You just got to be willing to go and face it. And that's the hard part. The physical standard is not what they need to meet. It's a mental standard you must meet in life. That's how I live my life. I now know that there is no cap on the human mind. There's no cap. We cap it ourselves. When most people quit, I had just started. And when you take that mindset and you learn to flip that around, that's what made me powerful and my body followed. And so I said, I want to do this. I'm going to give myself a challenge every single day until the fear goes away. That's right. And I feel like that's what more of us should be doing. I'm hearing that that's what you, how you live your life. That's all it is, man. And it helps me feel so much more confident. When you overcome that fear yep. of saying, this doesn't have control over me anymore. That's right. It's like, you can be at such more peace. 
A lot of us speak in hollow words. I used to speak in hollow words. I don't do it anymore. Everything that comes out of my mouth has substance. It's real. We all have these feelings in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls. I act on mine. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. When I'm afraid of something, it's telling me you must, you must do that. Life is one big mind game. And you're playing it with yourself. You cannot lose perspective of where you've come in life. I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that, but it's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. Rocky won round 14. That one two minute and 13 second clip of Rocky getting up when Apollo knocked him down. That one clip, when I was going through a very bad time in my life, I saw what I wanted to be. And it wasn't a guy that won. It wasn't a guy that won everything he did. It was a guy that kept getting up after being knocked down. So I realized if that two minutes and 13 seconds changed my life, that's all it was. I saw something that I needed to be in the world I was living in. Maybe my story will give someone the two minutes and 13 seconds they need to change their life. Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We, have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you when you were sad when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind to think differently in health. The mental standard is you must know how far you've come. I walk in a room now and I know the hours and years and decades I put into David Goggins. That's something, it's not on the wall. It's not a trophy on the wall. It's not a medal on your neck. I don't care how you perceive David Goggins because through my journey, I figured out the one piece I was missing. I thought it was cars. I thought it was women. I thought it was money. I thought it was everything. The one piece I was missing was me having the courage to face myself. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn, do hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day mm -hmm. than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that valedictorian studied for an hour, and you know I caught you. I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Gaga's got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty. And then they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life and you realize this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. It wasn't until I got real sick and my life got real quiet. I went from running 205 miles in 39 hours to I couldn't get out of bed. My life was taken from me. And wow. that's when I realized I hadn't taken time to think about what I'd done in my life. I'd done all these things, but there was no finish line. I finished a race of life and I wouldn't even receive my medal. I go on. I get in the car and I go. When I started figuring out life, 
that I was, I was leaving so much in the tank. Once I realized, my God, man, I was this dumb, fat kid being bullied. And now I'm a 180 pound person, lost 106 pounds in less than three months. Learn to read, learn to do this, learn to do that. I was like, I need more. I was fueling my mind with everything. I never took time to say, my God, you came from this hell and you're here. I had come 8,000 miles from where I started. But if you never know that, you're still in a $7 a month place. So it's that quiet place. It's that place by yourself. It's those hours and years and decades by yourself in the grip of life. When life has you by the throat and choking you out and you're sitting there calm because you're trying to figure it out. You're not panicking. You're not quitting. You're not throwing in the towel. You're saying there's a way around this. And when you figure it out, when life has you gripped in advice and you can figure that out, that's when you overcome. That's when you overcome. The journey getting there was harder than going through it. Yeah. You know, so that's the whole thing about life, man. It's, it's, it's that journey that, that makes you who you are. Today we got to ghost everyone. Anyone that ever doubted us, anyone that ever lied to us and told us that they believe in our vision, we got to reset. We live in a culture of busyness, distraction, and noise. And sometimes the only way something's going to change is if we disappear. We got to focus on the reason why we started everything. Why we woke up early in the morning to grind. Why we cried those tears. When we wanted the world to say yes, but everyone continued to say no. You see, you gotta forget about the dollars. Can you unplug from people's ideas, from people's agendas, from people's viewpoints and perspective of you and life? Can you unplug? Forget about the dollars that told you that you didn't have what it take to be the greatest. You gotta reset. What if you could just shut out every distraction? What if you could just shut out the world for just a season and focus on you? You have to disappear and put the work in and come back and shock everybody that doubted you. You gotta understand the power of being alone. Let's go back into the darkness where all the greatness was created, where all the motivation was created. Let's get back to the beginning. Because only then will you hear the thoughts of the greats. We celebrate athletes and we celebrate critical thinkers and innovators and actors and we praise them and claim them our heroes and we follow them by the millions. We love what they do in public, but you don't know the story behind the glory. You don't know the blood, the sweat. You didn't see the tears that they cried, the prayers that they prayed, the countless weeks where they went without sleep to get where they are. I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that is willing to go through the process in the dark room that prepares us and equips us for the stages of destiny. Rise, let's ghost everyone. You got to get back to that child. That child that wanted to dream. That wanted to chase everything the world told him that he couldn't have. Yes, we got to reset. We're surrounded by the noise. We're surrounded by the social media, the Instagram. All of these things that give us no fulfillment. And the reason why you feel this way it's because you've been surrounded by negativity. You've been surrounded by individuals that call themselves your friend. But in all reality, they're just another energy drainer. They're just another person that wants to tell you 
that you cannot accomplish your dreams because they failed at every obstacle they ever tried to defeat. Let's go back into that hole. Let's go back into the darkness. Some of the most monumental and transformational portraits and pictures that we've ever seen were developed in the dark room. I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that administrator. I'm talking to that nurse, that doctor. I'm talking to that student. I'm talking to that communicator. I'm talking to that pioneer, that inventor. I'm talking to that entrepreneur. I'm talking to that preacher. I'm talking to that person who refuses to stay where they are. I'm talking to that person that doesn't have a problem laying in obscurity because you know that when you come out of the dark room, all eyes on you. Rise from that ghost state, a new man and a new woman on its journey to greatness. Why are you here? What is your destiny? I got a question. What will you do when no one is watching? What will you do when no one is listening? That's the only time that we'll be able to bring something to this world that it never seen before. One of the greatest challenges with disappearing is understanding the revelation of building in the dark. The secret of change is to focus all of our energy, not on fighting the old, but building the new and specifically behind closed doors when nobody's looking, when no one is there to affirm you, when nobody's there to validate you, when nobody is there to agree with you, you build in the dark and you announce it when it's finished. Let me tell you, you're gonna fight until you can't fight no more. And when you can't fight anymore, you're gonna lay down and bleed a while. And then you're gonna get up and fight some more. Sometimes you have to fall back into the dark room and focus on you. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong! There are people in your life that claim to be your friends. And honestly, they are just standing there waiting to see you fail. Yeah, you have those friends that come out to support you and tell you how great you are. But when they're driving off, leaving from the event, they're saying to themselves, I can do that better than him. Or I can do that better than her. Disappear and do the work that is required. Sometimes you gotta take a break from just about everything, disappear, come back, and shock the world. You've been surrounded by individuals that call themselves your friend. They're just another person that wants to tell you that you cannot accomplish your dreams. Are you worth my time? If you're not, it's time to unplug. Time to unplug. Time to unplug. This is the process when you have to reset and when you have to ghost everyone. In order to achieve greatness, you must first believe you can. What's the biggest challenge that most of these individuals have? What's the common challenge? Believe. That they don't believe, man. You know. It's, it's, um, it's all mental and people don't get it. You know, everybody wants to say, okay, well, here go 10 steps to, okay, Lewis said do eight, ET said do nine. Mm -hmm. You know, this person says this is 12 steps and everybody's trying to get the steps without the mentality. 
You got this. I believe in you. When somebody says, no matter what happens, whether it succeeds or fails, I'm going to be by your side. Oh, that's that's when I have the confidence to do difficult things. Wow. So it's the people in my life. You should recognize the potential in yourself and love yourself enough to make the changes that produce the best possible version of yourself. Or how do you overcome self-doubt? How do you overcome self-doubt? Help someone else overcome self-doubt. I love that. I love that. You overcome self-doubt by helping. Like, and it's not a selfish thing. I'm only helping you so I can. Mm -hmm. You have to genuinely love and commit to the person. So it's not the car, the house, the whatever. It is that internal goal, that internal why. And so for me, I just think that's it. Like that, like you, ah, it's just, mm. it's something within it. You mm. gotta pull it out. And so it's easy when you have a why, a purpose. I'm doing it for this, I'm doing it for that. It's easy to get up and get going. But if it's just for a car, what happens when you get the car? Cause you can buy it. What happens when you get the house and you can buy the house? The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you. You have got to stand up to that voice. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on what you're doing, on the goal that you want to reach. You've got to sell yourself every day, every day, every day. According to your level of belief, it will manifest itself in what you're doing. Whatever we have right now, whatever we're demonstrating in our lives, is a result of what we believe subconsciously that we deserve. And part of increasing that belief level is that you have got to convince yourself every day I believe I'm the best there is. I ain't apologizing for it to anybody. I, th I think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. If you can't do it, you scratch, claw, and even die trying. Somewhere, I believe that I am not enough. I'm not good enough, smart enough, talented enough, worthy enough, whatever it might be. And that was definitely my biggest insecurity was I'm not enough in so many ways. And so I needed people to give me the approval. I needed people to accept me because I didn't accept it. I accept myself fully now. It doesn't mean I'm still not hungry. It doesn't mean I'm still not a work in progress. It doesn't mean I'm still not driven to create re results in my life and make an impact and do all these beautiful things. But I finally come to myself after literally 10 years of different healing modalities and processes and making big mistakes and learning and growing, I finally feel at peace with accepting myself. From that space, I feel like I can do anything, no matter if people talk crap about me. It doesn't mean I have to like it, but I can still do it and not be afraid of that. And that's really at the core of the greatness mindset is identifying which fear holds you back because I believe self-doubt is the killer of dreams. Once you start questioning yourself, you're already lost. Once you start questioning yourself, once you start going into a state of depression and you start being by yourself and you start thinking and wondering, once you start wondering, you're already lost. Even if you don't believe, believe. I'm the best right now. And if you want to go through motivational speaking, you got to go through me. Ain't nobody doing it like this. They all want shirt and tie. Ain't nobody bring hip hop to motivation. I must be the greatest. I shook up motivational speaking. I changed the whole genre. I must be the greatest, not because I'm cocky, but I gotta tell myself I'm the best if I'm gonna be the best. I gotta believe in me before anybody else believe in me. On Christmas morning when I unwrap my camera, I actually don't believe in my ability. So much so that I say I can't even open the box to this camera until January 1st because in the new year, I'm gonna be a different person. So that should just like kind of like really betray the lack of belief that I had in myself to begin with. So then it was opening the camera and 
saying, I told my husband, I'm like, oh, I think you got me the wrong battery. No, no, it was just me putting the battery in the wrong way. I had no idea which way was up. I was cutting every single corner. I was looking at the work that I was doing and I feel like I had enough wherewithal to look at my work and say, this is terrible. I know what good is and what I am doing is terrible, but do I have the capacity to make it a little bit less terrible? I was a person for 365 days who said, come hell or high water, I'm gonna go all in. I want to look back on my deathbed and said, you gave it everything you had. So I stopped being a lot so like social. I didn't do extracurricular activities. I woke up earlier, I went to bed later. I don't think that's a lifestyle, like a permanent lifestyle, but at the time that I gave myself 365 days, I, there was no more messing around. There was no more excuses. You have a story. You know, you, you have a unique experience. And so your 12 are shaped by, by not just your world, but how your world has shaped your thinking. And I think that's the part that mission is like, guys, if, you know, if it was easy, everybody could do it. If it was a cookie cutter, everybody would just follow it to the T. But there's a mindset. And when I looked at Serena, you know, when I look at the Michael Jordans Tom of the world, Brady. Tom Brady, you know, when you look at Michael Phelps, like it is a mentality. It's the consistent actions of doing the hard things or just the things you say you're going to commit to mm -hmm. and completing those things, which build the confidence and the belief in yourself. A lot of people that have these issues of the self-doubt is because they have not put the work in to have the belief in themselves that they can accomplish whatever yeah. it is. The reason why you're not taking advantage of this opportunity is not because you don't believe in it, you don't believe in you. We suck at first, but I just kept going. I just really believed that I could have anything that I wanted if I was willing to work for it. And when I was number 20, I started saying, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I went to the computer, and the world said exactly what I said, that Eric Thomas is number one in the world. I spoke it, the world heard it, and it activated. Your problem is that you don't believe you belong here. Your problem is that you don't think you should be sitting down here. Listen to me very closely. If I had one message to leave you with that's a game changer is you need to start to believe. And I, for one, I can tell you my, in my own experience, my own self-confidence, um, a uh, hundred percent comes from the relationships that I have. Um, it's not some deep internal fortitude. In order to achieve greatness, you must first believe you can. you have fallen, when you have made a mistake, the worst thing you can do is criticize yourself. At the end of the day, life can be very painful. We can experience loss and worry and the insomnia of reoccurring heartbreak and hardships. It is inevitable. It is self-compassion that gives us the power to face our failures, to face our fears, to face our insecurities, to face what we don't like about ourselves and come out on top. When you're down, find a way to get up. I've been there. I go through it like anybody else. But I have a job to do in this world, and so do you. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. Evaluate where you are. Look at it, assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I'm telling you from personal experience, I know what my life was like when I put in 55. I know what it was like when I didn't try. I know what my life was like when I didn't care. I know what my life was like when I didn't have any dreams or any goals, like, like I didn't want anything. I know what my life was like. Now I'm putting in 120, baby. You put in 120. Not only does it affect your life, 
It affects your family's life. It affects your friend's life. It affects your community's life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to get from where you are. I'm challenging you to stop settling. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to stop accepting the life that was given to you. I'm challenging you to give 120%. Are you hearing me? Trying is not good enough. Trying is not going to get you there. We need potential. We need application. We need dedication. We need motivation. We need discipline. We need to understand that work must be applied. And even when you don't want to do it, find a way to do it anyway. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. If you are going to win the fight for your future, then you are going to have to master self-compassion. Face the conflict. Embrace rather than avoid challenges. And you don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on yourself. When you find yourself criticizing yourself, negatively comparing yourself to others, try to find inspiration in their successes and strengths instead of feeling threatened. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. Everybody gets knocked down. No matter how tough you think you are, you're going to fall. And when you fall, sometimes you fall real hard. But that ground is a hard surface. And I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to move because you're laying on it. So you need to rise up and you need to rise above it and you need to start moving. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you're under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Stop half doing stuff. Stop putting forth 50% effort, 60%. Look, stop. Do it right or just don't do it at all. Are you hearing me? Do it right. There's a lot of people walking around today, they have unchecked rage, unchecked aggression, unchecked anxiety, fear, insecurity. You're gonna to have to care enough about yourself to face it and find a resolve. You got to find out what's the next things you need to be doing. How are you gonna push it to that level and go beyond it? How are you gonna maximize your time? How much energy are you gonna put into this craft? Everything you have, everything you are, everything you're doing, like it's, it's 78. And what I need you to do is I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, come on, quit, stop playing. I deserve to see what my life would look like if I gave 120%. Stay dedicated. You've got to keep on pushing forward. You've got to keep on fighting the good fight. You've got to put aside the excuses because excuses won't lift you up. Excuses won't give you the power that you truly need. You've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not gonna let this get me down. I'm not gonna let this destroy me. When you get knocked down, how long are you gonna stay down? When you lose your job, when you lose that loved one, regardless if it's your husband, your wife, your child, whatever it is, do you have the ability to go through the hurt and the pain of that loss? Regardless of what you're going through, the best time you know that you are strong is when you're at the weakest point of your life. I want you to see yourself in your mind's eye and say to yourself, I love myself unconditionally and I forgive myself. If I knew better, I would have done better. To win the war for your future, then you are going to have to master the muscle of self-compassion. When you are so far down that hole, you looking up and you don't see no light but yet you know there's an end to this darkness. That's when you'll find out just how strong you really are. Just keep moving forward. If you think that you're going through something so bad right now, wait until tomorrow if tomorrow comes for you. Look at the person next to you. 
Look at people all over the world if you ever come in contact with certain individuals and ask yourself, are uh, they going through a lot more than what I'm going through? Because honestly, there are always going to be people that are going through a lot more than you're going through right now. Remember the past, but do not live in the past. Every mistake you have made up until this very moment, forgive yourself. With forgiveness comes freedom. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This is a process, and you have to hurt just a little bit so you can understand what it means to be strong. So don't give up on your hopes. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on yourself. One of the most important lessons in life that you should know is to remember to have an attitude of gratitude, of humility. Understand where the gift comes from. It's not mine, it's been given to me. Use what I have, use what you have to help others. You know, on your last day, you can't take it with you, but you can leave it here. I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you. It's your responsibility to find your new 100%. You write the story of your life. No one can write your financial story. No one can write your spiritual story. No one can write your emotional story but you. Your life has value. Your words carry weight. And when you allow your actions to follow your words, you change things around you. This is who you are. This is the very fiber of the person that I'm talking to in this room. You know, take advantage of the opportunity that you have at this age and the people that you know to build your life resume. It's what I talk about all the time, you know? It's like, you have the work resume. So what? That means nothing if you're not building up your life resume. Believe in everything that you are and understand that within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. Have faith in your abilities. Work hard, never give up, and there's nothing you can't accomplish. A person's character is not judged when they ride the wave of success. When everyone chants their name and you want to be their friend, no. Your character is put to the test when your back is against the wall. We didn't come this far to come this far. We came here it's about putting it on the line. It's about pushing yourself and giving it 110 percent of everything you got. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. You need to shut down all negativity. You will follow me. You will bite your word. You don't want this enough. My life on the line. You hear me? Get your life on the line today. Everything on the line. I'm going to do the next right thing, not overcomplicate it. What I feed will grow, and what I starve will die. If you are alive, you have another opportunity to begin again. You got to get up on your own. You got to be able to make big decisions on your own. You got to lose weight on your own. There are a myriad of targets you have to hit by yourself. Oftentimes, it's the people that go away into a very healthy isolation to equip themselves, to condition themselves, to educate themselves, to come out empowered. And so you got to get into this workspace where you can do it by yourself. And I know you're fractured and I know you're bleeding in places nobody can see. But if you shut it down, you can heal. You're standing at the precipice, the edge of the greatest move in your life. And, and, and the time is now like never before to, 
Take a leap of faith! Stop waiting to feel like it. Stop waiting until you see it. Stop waiting for somebody to come and save you. Nobody's coming to rescue you. The question is, how bad do you want this? You feel like you're underpaid and undervalued and overlooked, but listen. Get up! This is the day that everything changes. Go through the process. Go through the mud. Run in the rain. Dance in the snow. Inhale. Exhale. Come back and shock the world! Find a mirror and tell yourself, I got this today. <laughs> I got this today. I'm going to make it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to build it. All I have is all I need. Resources may come and go. People may come and go. But I've got a vision, and I've got the provision, and I've got the determination and the discipline to hit my aims and to punch through my target. You may be tired, you may be broken, you may be hurting, people may have betrayed you, lied on you, left you, but you refuse to give up. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. Everybody wants to grow a little bit taller, so we gotta push a little bit harder. Life is lived on levels, and I can't bring my spotter with me. The spotter cannot walk with you all of your life. At some point, you gotta say, I got this. Push! Can you walk away from everything for 30 days? Just one month, 720 hours. Imagine who you could be in 30 days. You got one life to live. Rain, sleep, or snow. The time is now. Yeah, nothing changes and nothing changes, man. You know, we'll sit around forever wondering, well, what if I, you know, what if I was a dog catcher? Would I be the best? What if I was a, you know? Every day we change the world, but to change the world in a way that means anything, that takes more time than most people have. It never happens all at once. It's slow. It's methodical. It's exhausting. We don't all have the stomach for it. What if it's a mistake? It's a mistake. Rest assured. What do you know? You're going to stumble around, right? And what's going to happen is this. You're going to move. To, you're going to not stay in stasis. You're not going to wander around in circles. And I see people like that. They said, well, I never knew what to do, and now I'm 40. It's like, that's not so good. That's not so good. And you might say, well, and there is a literature, too, that suggests that people are a lot more unhappy when they look back in their lives about the things they didn't do than they are about the mistakes they made while they were doing things. It's how they get you to give up. They say it's not that simple, Vinny. So what's the truth? That it is. I want people to understand that they're not alone, that there are other people feeling exactly the way they're feeling, that their behavior is not insane, that they have a disease, and it's not their fault. There's a very famous kind of line that people don't change. I happen to know that people do change, and I see that every day. I see people getting better. I see the lights in their eyes come on. There's a million excuses I could make to rationalize not getting up early, doing the ice bath, and going for a run. But there comes a time when all these potential excuses turn into fuel that motivates you to keep going. You gotta get out there. You gotta give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because remember this, you will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. If you wanna know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say, what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix. You meditate on that, you'll get an answer.
And it won't be one you want, but it'll be the necessary one. It's the whole issue. People have a feeling that they can change, but they have no effort. They don't want to get in the game because they feel it's, you know, it's just too much time and it doesn't work. And I tried it and it didn't work. And then they give up and then life just goes on. It's seamless. You, you don't see it. It's just the way you've been living. And my older brother, who was 12, got into an electrical accident and he died in my arms and really come to terms with that I was the one who got to live. Mm. That this life that we live, it's a privilege. And when I really started to take that in, I felt this tremendous urge to do something with my life, to do something that mattered. At some point, everything's going to go south on you. Everything's going to go south, and you're going to say, this is it. This is how I end. Now, you can either accept that, or you can get to work. You can't stop. You can't quit. You can't say, I'm a failure. You're not a failure. You're not. You're a wonderful, strong, intelligent youngster. Take advantage of that. Trust in God. Trust in yourself. Until you say, yeah, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm going to take action. Nothing changes if nothing changes, man. And I'm not preaching at you. I'm just, uh, I just want to remind you because, you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life sitting around wanting things to change. Um, and not being able to make them change and, and not thinking I could. And I wish somebody had told me that earlier sometimes. That in order for something to change, there needs to be change. You cannot stand still because the world moves away from you if you stand still. And there's no stasis, there's only backwards. And so if you're not moving forwards, then you're moving backwards. How much harder will you work in this offseason now to get back to the championship? I'll push myself to exhaustion. Toby, we thank you for your time. I just, I feel like we sort of focus on right ways and wrong ways too much. And um, I think it's in a sense sort of scary to just be born and live life. And, and I, I understand the, the idea of kind of grasping onto um, a particular thought of wanting to kind of feel like you somehow have a handle on the unknown. But you know what? The unknown is, is the unknown. <laughs> Every time you have changed, you feel pain. You stepped out of one relationship to another and you feel pain. You leave one neighborhood to another and you feel pain. You go from one job to another and you feel the fire of transition. See change as growth. See change as transformation. See change as evolution. See change as necessary. See change as critical. See change as inevitable. Do something, stop being f***ing scared if you have not jumped on the bandwagon of doing exactly what the f*** you wanna do, which is skiing for the next three years or working at a job that's not what your parents want or what society wants. Do something, stop being f***ing scared. And so enough, enough parents, the kid that's sitting right now at a desk and saw this in a feed and you hate your f***ing job, enough. Stand up, get the f*** out of here, and do you. Live your life. You got one life. And so if you're not willing to be a fool, then you'll never start anything new. And if you never start anything new, then you won't develop. And so the willingness to be a fool is the precursor to transformation. And that's the same as humility. And so if you're going to write your destiny, you can do a bad first job. You're going to get smarter as you move forward. When you can learn to do things when you don't want to, when you don't feel like it, when you're tired, when you can learn to push yourself to do them, that's when the world opens up to you. That's when success knocks at your door. There will never come a time when you can just happily coast through life. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. What I am telling you to do is chase after that version of yourself that you know you could be. What happens when I decide for myself that I'm going to do something different?
You've got the gift of life. You have the privilege of being here. Quit playing small. You were meant to do great things. Nothing changes if nothing changes, man. I need to constantly remind myself over and over again, I am not yet where I want to be, but I know I'll get there. It's not enough to hope to win one day. You've got to expect to win today. When you set a goal, there needs to be a sense of urgency. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Life will whoop your butt so bad. You will be so miserable, you will catch so much hell, you say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. That dream is not going to wait and say, take a breather. It's going to say, come catch me. Catch me if you can. If only I'd taken the chance. They didn't start a business. They didn't ask that crush out for a date. They didn't travel. They had an opportunity at, at one point in their life to do something beyond play it safe. They chose not to do that and now they regret it. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. Believe in everything that you are and understand that within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. Have faith in your abilities. Work hard, never give up, and there's nothing you can't accomplish. It's all on you. If you fail, it's because you stopped running. If you fail, it's because you stopped grinding. You stopped caring. You stopped working. You stopped working for that dream. That dangled in your face. The gift that God left you. Don't be the person that forgets to open your gift. Because that dream has everything you need in it. That dream is the road that will lead to your paradise. Regret hurts. There's no question about that. But here's the thing. Regret also instructs. And you can't have one without the other. So if you avoid the pain, you don't get any of the learning. So what you have to do is be able to process that pain. And I think there's a way for us to do that, to take our regrets, use them as signals. You, my friends, are going to get there. You are going to get that promotion. You are going to complete that marathon and you are going to run for your life. Not only can you create your life, you can recreate it. Because in order to begin to reinvent your life, you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort that you really have got to put all of yourself into it. There's nothing going to stop me. If you didn't make me, you can't break me. If you didn't make the sun come up, you can't stop me. If you didn't make the moon shine at night, you can't stop me. My purpose, my will, my dedication, my motivation is all about doing the business because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm about. I'm about that business, I'm about that life. What are you about? Discipline sounds hard, but it's only hard when you don't want the reward bad enough. When you want something bad enough, you will wake up early. When you want something bad enough, you will pass on hanging out with your friends. When you want something bad enough, you will not back down. You don't have to prove anything to anyone but yourself.
yourself. You begin to discover some things about you that you don't know you've got. Start waiting for your dreams. Run towards your dream. Because the moment you stop running, the moment you stop fighting, is the day you will lose it. Don't wait for it. Continue to fight. Continue to taste of what you truly want out of your life. Today is here. Today you're breathing. Today is your opportunity. Work like hell. Crack the ground and keep moving. Make the ground shake. Crack the world. Get it going. Don't let nothing stop you. When the rest of the world shuts you down, you got to be the one to stand up, shout out, cry out, stand tall, work hard, dig deep, and go after it. Day one or one day, you decide. I look back sometimes at moments of regrets in my past. I wish I had made better decisions in my life. I truly do. If only I had pushed just a little bit more, did a little bit better, just an inch, just a fraction of an inch is all I needed to give. I know, ladies and gentlemen, there are moments in your life you've experienced it too. You didn't rise up to the challenge when, when it called for you. You didn't rise up to the challenge because you were afraid of it. We need to understand how to deal with our negative emotions. We can't ignore them like no regrets. We can't wallow in them like, oh my God, it's so terrible, I'm such an awful person. So among the misunderstandings are, we think that when we experience regret, it's somehow an aberration when in fact, everybody experiences regret. Regret makes us human. Regret is part of the human condition. What's more, we think that regret makes us weaker when in fact, the research shows that done right, regret can make us stronger, that we can enlist our regrets as a, an engine for forward progress. What's a winner's mentality, you ask? It means being focused on yourself and not other people. It means having desire. It means wanting it willingness to work for it. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. The one thing that you must understand is that you don't get any do-overs. Once your day ends, that's it. So what action do you need to commit to taking today? This is for the dreamers. The dreamers that cannot sleep. The dreams, they run away from us when we're running our fastest. We will not be last. We will meet our dreams in our paradise. We will marry our dreams. We will hold them tight to our hearts. And we will make them ours. Make them ours forever. Come in dreams, I'm chasing. So you're better off just making decisions for fundamental reasons, doing things you care about that are meaningful and that contribute, and, and being alert to opportunity along the way, recognizing that the path is not a path, it's the opposite of a line. It's a messy, three-dimensional squiggle. I need to constantly remind myself I'm not yet where I want to be, but I know I'll get there. I'm the best ever. There's no one that can match me. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. They're going to fear me. You have to be the champion before you become the champion, so that means lifestyle. You have to be him before you become him. You gotta be him before you become him. That's how it starts. You look at somebody, I wanna be like him. You don't say, hey, I'm a bad mother.
I want to fight everybody out here. Nobody's going to kick my ass. You see somebody and say, hey, I might want to do that. Well, greatness is when you make your delusions your reality. Nothing's impossible for somebody who's going to try. If you're going to try, it's capable of being done. But you'd fight Tyson Fury. Hey, I'll fight a lion if the price is right. <laughs> My whole objective is your total surrender, your total domination. I'm going to destroy you. That's why Rogan said when he watched you, you were intimidating. Your rage is a very unique rage. Well, that's their fault to be intimidated. How you let somebody scare you for something you worked for? I respect a person who's willing to die for what he truly wants. Ali had the will to win like nobody that ever lived in boxing. Then he believed he projected to his opponent. Really, look at how did Ali beat George Foreman? How does Ali beat Sonny? Listen, how do you beat these guys? How did he even beat Joe Frazier? Fighting the way he fights. He beat them because he refused to lose. But we have to believe that we're divine and that we learn from our experience because confidence breeds success and success breeds confidence. They go hand in hand. You have to know who you are first. You know who you are. I know who I am. People say they're great all the time. You this, you that. Whatever they say, I, I know who I am. Without self-love, you're nothing. Because self-love is discipline. And discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. I never wanted to be obscure. I was born in obscurity, and I never wanted to deal with that again. I'm invincible. I'm a savage. I'm ferocious. I'm the smartest savage. I knew I wasn't going to die before I became champ. When this is over, everybody's going to know my name. Did you ever fight somebody that you were like, that they got you? Was there ever a kid that got you or no? Absolutely. In order to be good, you have to lose it and understand loss. Because loss is life. Adversity makes the strong stronger or the weak weaker. What happens next? So again, get arrested, and I see Muhammad Ali come and visit the institution that I'm in. You said you're in jail, and Ali shows up. I'm 12 years old, and Ali comes there, and they and they showed the movie The Greatest first. So this is 77, and um, after the movie's over, the lights come up, and Ali comes in, and I see him. I said, well, I want to be just like him. I don't wow. know how it happened. The spirit hit me. Boom! I want to be like him. And then I get transferred to this other facility, you know, for real bad kids. I met a gentleman there that was a boxer, and he used to teach me how to box. So he took me to a great trainer named Customato, and that's why I'm here. I respected Ali, and I worshiped Ali. Yeah, this is the moment I knew I wanted to be a fighter. Freaking believable yeah. story. So your inspiration happened at 12 years old. Yeah. Then you meet Cus. Yes. How was Cus treating you? What um, was his way of leading you? This um, degree of just peeling all that dirt and stuff, that insecurity and um, developing into character. And um, that's why I had a wonderful time with him. Because everything about everything about his life was about me. This world is one big school, and we're the students of this world. The mind is always hungry. The mind wants to do good, but we get so many negative thoughts in our mind, it's almost overwhelming to be positive. Listen, I've been down and up, down and up, broken up, and why am I still here? Because life is going to give everybody a bad hand. No one's going to leave here without being tried in life. So inspiration. So is that what got you to be uh, willing to be disciplined to get what you want, like to become a champion? At 14 years old, I'm willing to Absolutely. do everything it takes to be a champion? Absolutely. And then I had Cuss over there telling me, why, why should he have it? That's one thing I never had in my life, because I always got picked on and 
I never had jealousy or enviness about anything. And Cuss possessed that, you know, and he was telling me, why should he have all that money and you don't? Why, why do you believe that he's better than you? Why do you think he should have all that money and you don't? And he was really serious about it. And that was the competition shit. That's it right there, breathing that stuff right in me. Why, why should he have it and he's not better than you? How did you handle that when he told you that, 14? Would it piss you off? Were you like, I'm gonna go train to whoop his ass and uh, get there one day? What was, it, what was your response to it? He said one day, this guy knew how to really get in my head. He said, man, you're fighting good, but I wish you were bigger. He said, I wish you were like Kenny Norton or uh, Mike Weaver because they had big bodies and they could intimidate somebody. And that hurt my feelings. I said, I make sure the whole world will be afraid of me. He trained me to be totally ferocious in the ring and out. Well, yeah, and that's what I was. <laughs> that's what I was, yeah. Push yourself more. You push yourself when, when you, sometimes you have to submit to yourself. I'm doing everything. And first thing in the morning, three in the morning, you do your uh, four miles, come back here. Three in the morning? Yeah. Do your four miles, come back in, do your body exercise and all that stuff. After that, I go after to eat breakfast, go to the school, come back from school, eat my dinner, I go back to the gym at six o'clock, train, come back at eight o'clock, um, watch fights, start all over again. Everybody here is gonna fight for what they love for. Even if they never had a fifth fight in their life, they're gonna fight. Listen, once I'm involved in something, I want to know the beginning of it. I want to know where it came from, how it was started, who's the first guy that invented it. That's just how my mind works. How could these guys even dare fight me? How dare you even think that you could beat me? And you sound like a mathematician when you're talking about the art of boxing. I was born for it. There's nothing I would do unless I have um, a possibility of being humiliated. Because when I succeed, I truly succeed. I was bred to climb high and high into the sky and tumble down. I am truly grateful that I found my wings before I hit the ground. Those of you out there, you lose it and you don't deserve to lose. You put in the work, you worked hard, and you lose it. And I need you to do me a favor. This is the year to turn that around. Yes, you were rejected the last time, but go for it again. You were overlooked the last time, but show up again. Why? Because you are not finished. It is not over. You are not done. It is not too late. But what separates a dreamer from a doer? Let me break that down. Three words, consistent follow through. Imagine a basketball player shooting hoops. How do you know if that shot's going to go in? How do you know if that person is a shooter? You know how you become a shooter? You know how you knock it down? It's all in the follow through. I know about tough times. They can make you or they can break you. Come on now. Come on. Bring it. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. God not given us spirit of fear. So I didn't have time to be fearful. I had to replace fearfulness with being fearless and creative and take the initiative to do something else with my life. I am going to make it. This is my comeback story. It takes faith to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. So from the start, you must decide that you refuse to remain where you are. Have you ever thought about inspiring somebody else? Have you ever thought about lifting somebody else? We need you to be a light in the midst of darkness. This world has gone crazy. This world needs you to rise up. This world needs your dreams. This world needs you to be you. Give as much time and energy to your dream as you do to your fears. That creates the opening for miracles to show up in your life.
I need you to acknowledge the fact, acknowledge that you lose it. Are you hearing me? Acknowledge it, own it. Own up to the fact that I'm losing, E. I'm losing financially, E. I'm losing. I'm losing in my marriage, E. I'm losing. I'm losing with my kids, E. I'm losing. Personal development, I'm losing, E. And I'm tired of losing. I need you to own up to it. I'm losing. I'm a high school dropout, I'm losing. I'm working minimum wage, I'm losing. I'm getting in trouble with the law, I'm losing. My mom ain't talking to me in a strained relationship, I'm losing. I'm asking you to control what you can control. You can control going to bed. You can control getting up. You can control being on time. You can control going to class. You can control showing up. You can control doing your homework. You can control your attitude. You can control being nice. You can control doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. It's your boy E.T. said, you want to be a winner and you want to stop losing? You minimize the errors and make the rest of your life the best of your life. Even when it looks like you're losing, you're winning. Never let uncertainty or doubt be the reason why you quit. Don't underestimate yourself. You do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do. Take the initiative, learn something new, throw your net on the other side, be ambitious, Reach, ask for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. Just make up your mind and expect things to get better for you. You need to walk into your future whole, condition, ready to grab the people that believed in you before you made it to the top. Go back and get them, but first you've got to condition yourself. Come on, who am I talking to? I'm talking to that person that's tired of where they are. You have to find a way. You must find a way to get back up. This is not the end for you. You will not quit. Do not take this life for granted. Live every moment knowing you will have no regrets. We are alive and breathing and capable of more than we could ever imagine. See, we all have these tough moments in life. Walt well, Disney filed bankruptcy seven times and he had two nervous breakdowns. Oh, he was bent, but he wasn't broken. No, he kept creating. Someone stole his first cartoon that had great promise and, and someone stole it. Somebody on his team stole it from him. His heart was broken. But he didn't stay there, being angry and bitter and talking about it. He created Mickey Mouse. Had that person not stole his first cartoon, Mickey Mouse would not have been born. Many times when one door closes, another door opens, but we many times spend time looking at and talking about the closed door. We don't see the open door. Giving up is easy. Succumbing to how you feel is easy. But hanging in there, when you feel like you don't have anything left, now that's hard. So are you willing to make the tough decisions? Are you willing to stretch yourself? Are you willing to get up every time you fall? If you're gonna get to the top, you gotta know what it feels like to be at the bottom. You got to know what it feels like to crawl through the dirt and the mud and all of the things that you don't feel comfortable in being in. What do your eyes see? What is your vision? I need you to commit to it. Whatever just went through your mind right now, I need it to be big and I need you to commit. I need you to be big thinking. I need you to commit. I need you to make a plan and I need you to follow through. That is all success requires is for you to rise up. Without failures or challenges, there could be no success. Then you will get up and you will go up.
Miracles happen when you give as much energy to your dreams. A, a dream of, of picking up the pieces and starting all over again. The dream of if you get knocked down in life, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. A dream that when a doctor looks at you and says you're terminal and you say no, you determine the diagnosis. God determines the prognosis. The dream that this has not come to stay, it has come to pass. Oh, when you give as much time and energy to your dream, to this new vision of yourself, I'll give you all your eyes can see. Focus. There's greatness in you. There's so many people counting on you. You've heard this a million times, that this cemetery is full of potential. And that's true. Because that person didn't do what they needed to do through the dash. We all are born and we all gonna die. And I'm gonna ask you a question. What are you gonna do with your dash? Winning is not about the trophy and the accolades. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain. The reason I know so much about winning is because I've had to deal with so much losing. Everybody wants to win, but in order to know how to win, you gotta know how to lose. Because you're gonna lose more than you're gonna win. But what do you gain from it? You've trained some of the greatest of the greats, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Charles Barkley, Dwayne Wade. So you know something about winning. You know something about sustained winning over time. Your mind has to immediately shift back because now you felt and tasted something that you can only get through winning. Are you willing to do it again? And that was one of Kobe's favorite words when it related to winning. He says, you have to be obsessed with whatever your win is. Be all in. Three greatest lessons I learned from Michael. Competing, accountability, and then winning at all levels. Winning at all levels, what does that mean? You just don't win in one arena. You win in your sports, you win in business, you win in your personal life. Other people win because you win. It isn't just about you. It's about being able to pull the team and show them what it feels like to win. And this isn't about playing basketball like Michael Jordan did, like the late great Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade. This is about having the mindset to win. When you fail, your feelings give you excuses. Your mind makes you more resilient. You look at when Kobe, his first playoff series, he had this horrible game where he shot like four or five straight air balls. Now, he could have came back next year and said, I got to prove everybody that's mad, you're too young, why'd you take? No, he was just like, you know what? That's on me. I have to own that moment. Now, I got to prove to myself I can overcome this because now everybody else is doubting me, but I can't doubt myself. Everybody told MJ, don't go to North Carolina. You'll never play. You shouldn't be here. And Michael went out and he said, I don't need to prove to coach. I don't need to prove to Buzz. I need to prove to myself that I belong here. I always say, you can have fear, but you can't have doubt. When I was working with my professional athletes, it required me to do a lot of traveling. This story gets me every time. So when people say it didn't hurt, it still hurts. I was packing for a trip. My daughter walks into the room. She says, Daddy, why do you travel so much? Sweetheart, this is how I provide for the family. This is how I take care of you and mom. 
This is how I put food on the table. She looks at me, says, Daddy, if I eat less, will you stay home more? Now people would think in a fairy tale, or most people would say, I unpack my suitcase, I'm not gonna take this trip, but let's go grab some ice cream or let's go out. I kept packing. Why? I had to set an example for her early of what it meant to win and what you have to leave behind sometimes in order to pursue what's unique to you. And I wanted her to understand this is who I am. And I want to set an example for you. I had a conversation with her later on to tell her why I did all those things. And in the middle of the conversation, she stopped me. She goes, I get it. I understand. She saw the results. She saw how it brought us closer together. She understood my dedication to my craft and what it took to excel and what it took to be different and what it took to stand by unpopular decisions knowing that every successful person that I've met, every successful person that I know has had to make those decisions over and over again. There are things that are gonna to have to take a back seat. You're gonna to have to leave a lot of things behind. The hardest thing with Kobe was getting him to stop. Yeah, okay, take a break, rest. Yes. Take the day off. That was the most challenging thing with him because over all the years that he had his success, it was about go, go, go. And then when I came on, I was the complete icicle. I gotta get you to stop. His 3 a.m. workouts, yeah. they're crazy. crazy. You know, having to keep the Staples Center open later because he wasn't happy the way he performed at that game. and. I would not leave till he would leave. Really? Yeah, so we would be we would be in the arena sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning. Shut up. All the lights are turned off except on the court, and we just keep going, we just keep going. What is the mindset of winning? They both had that. So I look at it, I look at it three ways. So you have individuals that compete. Mm -hmm. You know a lot of people that compete. Yeah. You know, every, we all know how to compete. Everybody knows how to, how to compete. You don't forget how to compete. We just decide not to anymore. But some, a lot of people compete just to finish. Then there's individuals that win, but they only win one time. It's easy to win and then never win again. And then there's people that win at winning. You can't come back the same cannot come back the same. You have to come back different. You have to come back better. Winning wants you to be different. Winning requires you to do different things. Winning requires you to think in a different way. Winning speaks its own language. Winning has its own way of recognizing you. Winning wants you to write your own story. Stop looking for steps. Those steps are infinite. Find your own path to winning. Because as the late, great Kobe Bryant said, winning is everything. It's going to be a dog fight. I would love to tell you that on the road to success, everything is going to work out. It's not. It's going to be a dog fight. On the road to success, I lost five aunts to cancer. It's a dog fight. In the midst of my business, I lost aunts. I had to go to funerals. We had to get on a plane. We had to drive. 
We had aunts that are close to my age who died, who didn't have insurance. We had to raise money, a dog fight. I had cousins shot in stores, execution style, shot back in the, back in the head twice. It's a dog fight. Like you don't see that on YouTube, you don't see that on my TGI. It's a dog fight. My wife, three years ago, seven legions following her brain. It's a dog fight. It hadn't been easy. It's a dog fight. It hadn't been, the road hadn't been success. Like it's just a paved road and like each he go this way. It's been rough. It's been crooked. It's been hard. But I've made up in my mind that I will get a reward for the pain that I go through. I will not stop in the middle of the process. I will not be defeated. I will not be destroyed. I will take everything that happens in my life and I will allow the pain to push me to greatness. You will not break me. You will not stop me. You will not defeat me. The only way I lose is if I quit. It's going to be a dog fight. And so if you're ready to quit, then don't get started. If you're ready to quit, don't get started. If you're looking for this easy path, don't get started. If you think they're not going to close the door on you and say no a million times, don't get started. But every time they close the door, I just get excited. Why? Because I am not a no. I'm one yes away. I'm young, I'm one yes away. You can't keep telling me no forever. You can't keep denying me forever. This type of energy, this type of passion. You can't stop it. You can contain it for a while, but you cannot stop it. This is life. And you can't defeat me. There, there is not, you don't have enough power. You don't have enough energy. You don't have enough strength to stop this. Contain it for a year, you might. Two years, you might. You do not have hate. Does not have enough energy to destroy love. You cannot destroy this. It did happen to me at 19. It did happen to me at 20. It did happen to me at 30. It happened to me at 40. After I had been through all the, all the pressure I thought I could go through. Life said, you finished with all the pressure. I said, yeah. They said, let me bring on the heat. Then when I went through the pressure and the heat, y'all, I thought it was over. The creator said, now you ready to get cut? You said you wanted to be great, son. You said you wanted to travel the world. You said you wanted to help people, inspire people. Then you gotta be a diamond. In our armed forces, let's just pick one, the Navy for instance. The first thing they teach you, somebody, somebody over here, help me out. You are in the Navy, right? You're going, they're teaching you war, right? What's the first thing they teach you? The first thing they teach you, the very first thing they teach you is how to respond when you have a jam gun. And number two, how to carry a dead body. That's the first thing they teach you. They don't teach you how to defend yourself. They don't teach you how to swim. The first thing they teach you is when your gun is jammed. The first thing they teach you is a uh, dead body, how to carry a dead body. And somebody tell me, why would they start you there? That's the worst case scenario. That's what you're not prepared for. That's what you're not thinking. You're not thinking when you go out there to defend yourself that your gun is gonna jam. You're not, you're not thinking when you go out there that your boy gonna get killed and you gotta drag, you're not thinking that. So listen to me, it's not, it's not hardships that hurt us. It's not my cousin getting shot twice. It's not my cousin spending 50 years in jail. It's not my eyes dying to cancer. It's not my wife being diagnosed with seven legions on her brain that will break you. What will break most people is you didn't prepare for that. So when you put all your little goals and all your little dreams together, it's not the thing that broke you that broke you. It was you never even thought about the fact that you could be broken. You say it's gonna be a dog fight. And if you soft, this ain't that you wanna get out now. <laughs> this is where you like, I quit. But if you're willing to say, I'm not gonna quit. I guarantee you, whatever success you want to have, you're going to have it. You will not outrun me. 
You won't outgrind me. You can be smarter than me, you won't outgrind me. I'll get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and do videos. I'll do a video at 3 o'clock. I'll do a video at 2 o'clock. I'll do, I'm putting out so much doggone content, they can't keep up. They smarter than me. They better than me. I, I admit, I got a GED. I ain't the smartest person in the world, but I get up and do this for Didi. I do this every day for Didi because of what Didi did for me. I do this for my kids. My daddy wasn't there. I do this for my family. You can't stop me. The reason why some of you could be stopped is you're doing it for yourself. And guess what happens when you get tired? When you grinding, and you, when, grind, when you grinding, grinding hurts. Grinding is a sacrifice. Grinding costs. When you're grinding and your body tell you you hurt, when you're doing it for you, you stop. You never, you never prepared. You never, you never prepared for worst case scenario. And the reason why ET is standing here, because I'm prepared for it. If you know anything about me, I still lay on floors. I still eat chips off the floor. I still do some stuff that to most people is crazy, like ET, why would you do that? Because I'm always prepared that we may not live in that house one day. One day something might happen and we might have to go back to that. And if I have to go back to that, it's not going to break me. The thing we covered the most, that for a diamond to be produced, it must first go through extreme heat. Extreme heat. Extreme pressure. Are you hear what I'm telling you? For a diamond to be produced, it has to go through extreme pressure, extreme heat. And if that wasn't enough, what makes a diamond a diamond is the cut. So I put, you are put through, if you want to be a diamond, you must go through extreme pressure. If you can't take pressure, then you're not a diamond. After you go through all the pressure you thought you could not handle and you think it's over, then they turn on the heat. Of all the stuff I've gone through in my life, eating out of trash cans, sleeping in abandoned buildings, the worst thing that ever happened is when I went to the hospital and they told me my wife had a chronic illness and she might not be able to walk one day. People say, E.T., ask C.J., it never broke me. Why? Because I've been broken so much. Defeated so much. I've been disappointed so much in my life. But I know what it feels like and I can handle it. I know it's cold, but are you courageous enough to step into uncharted territory, beating on your crab day and night? I need you to disappear for the next 30 days. What does that look like? 720 hours dedicated to the future! Where focus goes, energy flows. The problem is you put too much energy into Netflix. You put too much energy into distractions. You put too much energy into entertainment. You put too much energy into things that are not feeding your purpose and destiny. Can you walk away from everything? Life has knocked you to the ground. You have survived the greatest traumas of your life. How tired are you of where you are right now? How bad do you want to get to that next level? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? Who are you willing to let go to get where it is that you want to be? See, everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to climb mountains. Everybody wants to be praised and celebrated. But nobody wants to sacrifice. Nobody wants to put in the work. Nobody wants to let go of every single distraction. Can you learn how to say no to what's hurting you? No to what's stopping you. No to the people that don't believe in you. The fakes and the phonies and the people that keep saying that they'll support you when you get there, but they leave you when you arrive. Why are you here? And what are you going to do about it? Because the truth of the matter is, we have a purpose, we have a destiny, we have fulfillment. We've got connections to make, we've got people to meet, we've got rooms to walk in, we've got tables to sit at. And I'm just wondering if you are willing, if you are courageous enough, if you have the faith, if you're bold enough to sit down for 30 days and write down what it is that's killing you.
Can you walk away from everything for 30 days? Just one month, 720 hours. Imagine who you could be in 30 days. You got one life to live. Rain, sleep, or snow. The time is now. I got three words for you. Shut it down. Log out of the social media. Get off the internet. Unplug and evaluate where you are and where you're supposed to be. And I know you're broken and I know you're tired and I know you're weary and I know you're confused and, and I know that you've got questions and I know you're fractured and I know you're bleeding in places nobody can see but if you shut it down you can heal you're standing at the precipice the edge of the greatest move in your life and and, and the time is now like never before to take a leap of faith it takes faith to jump off of the edge. It takes faith to step into your purpose. It takes faith to step into your destiny. It takes faith to pull away from everything that is familiar, to step into uncharted territory, to become the person you were born to be. It takes faith. Can you disappear for 30 days? The first person that needs to be influenced in your life is you. It's you. You can't lead anybody. You can't go anywhere unless you have awakened yourself on the inside to follow a specific plan. Write it out. I need you to disappear. Life is knocked you to the ground. There are people that have tried to bury you alive and you survive. Are you bold enough? Are you radical enough in your hunger and your thirst to go after what it is that you believe is yours? Are you crazy enough? Are you courageous enough to disappear for 30 days? Come back and shock the world! Can you suffer now that you live the rest of your life a champion? While the rest of the world is sleeping, you are wide awake and you are on the attack for your success. It doesn't start with them and they. It starts with me. So I'm just wondering when you're gonna make it personal. Are you really prepared to grind it out? Everybody wants public authority, but nobody wants private discipline. When your habits change behind the scenes, when your private life begins to shift, when you put aside the things that are not serving you, if it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. Success doesn't always have to be loud. Sometimes it's necessary to be quiet and just move. Are you really prepared to do what you need to do to get what you want out of your life? You gotta live. You have to breathe. You have to eat this purpose. Every single day, you are either losing ground or gaining ground. You are not going to win anything until you understand what struggle means. You can never quit. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta work when nobody's watching. You gotta sacrifice behind the scenes. When you take it personal, your private life changes. Success is a process. The process comes before success. The struggle comes before the process. Everybody wants to contribute to destiny, but nobody wants to be committed to destiny. What kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? What can you conquer in the dark? How personal is your purpose? This is what we call grinding in silence.
Not everyone needs to understand your true motives. Not everyone needs to understand your purpose. Not everyone needs to understand your mission. But the truth is, it's about passion. It's about discipline. It's about awareness. It's about accountability. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be accountable for your actions. But are you prepared to grind it out? Are you prepared to dig a little bit deeper? Are you prepared to fight a little bit harder? Are you prepared to put in overtime? Somewhere along the line, you lost your footing, you lost your place. It got cold, too cold for you. And see, one thing about an achiever is rain, sleet, or snow, they keep building. But you have not sacrificed you have not suffered. You are not committed. When you are committed, you give everything you have. Every single week, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, 720 hours a month, you are beating on your craft. Even when you're at work, you're dreaming, you're thinking, you're vision casting, you're writing it down, making it plain communicating to your destiny connections so that it can become a reality. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hands. But the question I want to ask you is, are you committed? Now it's time to grind. Now it's time to fight. Now it's time to believe. Now it's time to know that your success story has yet to be told. Don't sit back and have a pity party. Don't sit back and wait for an opportunity to happen. It is up to you to go out there and get the opportunities. You want success? Then go get it. You want to be better? Then be better. You want something more than what you have right now? Then you got to have the desire within your heart and go strong and go with everything you have. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what you've been called to do, what you've been called to accomplish, what you've been destined to build, who you've been called to be connected to, but the dots will connect. Every single moment that you have, is an opportunity of a lifetime. Are you committed or are you just contributing? The choice is yours. This time, make it personal. Hear my voice. Know that you do have some work to do. The work that you do will determine the outcome in the end, but do it in silence. The ones that need to be a part of your development, they will always be there. And the ones that doubted you, I'm talking about the naysayers, just simply say, shh, be quiet, because you have nothing to do with my success. You gotta give 110% and get it to a point where all you got to say is, shh. You don't have nothing to do with my success. The noise that you making can't stop my purpose. The noise that you making can't stop my fight. The noise that you making can't stop my grind. Your noise is just empty. It means nothing to my success. I didn't get it overnight. And yes, I had many sleepless nights. And I had 
amazing dreams of what I could become. Can you stretch yourself? Can you condition yourself? Come on, can you believe again? Can you see it again? Can you write again? Can you make this thing personal? That it doesn't start with the people connected to you. It starts with you. It doesn't even start with your past. It starts with where you are and where you're going. Can you look ahead? Can you stretch forth? Can you condition yourself? Can you prepare yourself for the next thing? Come on, make it personal. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta take it personal. I make this thing personal. So while you're sitting around, second-guessing yourself, my beautiful people, get back on your grind. Be productive. Keep your head up high. Stay in the moment. Live every moment. Move in silence. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. You got to learn how to move in silence. You may be average, you may be ordinary, but you have the opportunity every single day to make extraordinary decisions. And what you do today will determine your future. The future is very expensive. The currency to get to the future, the bridge that we build, it is built on your daily decisions, your habits, your programming, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you walk. Blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, people that you have to let go, sleep that you have to lose, multiple jobs that you have to work, hours on end of study, beating on your craft every single day. It's not easy, but it's worth it. There are going to be nights you're going to cry yourself to sleep. There are going to be times you're going to want to throw in the towel. But if you keep going, your future self will thank you. If you can hear your future self talking to you now, the future you would say thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not throwing in the towel. Thank you for not allowing the despair and the anguish and the anger and the bitterness and the jealousy and the ego to eat away at your progress and your perseverance and your ability to travail and endure. I believe in the future, number one. You gotta get crystal clear about who you believe you've been destined to be. Because everybody's looking to manifest. We are all looking to evolve. We are all looking to level up. What is your life's purpose? What is your destiny? Why on earth are you here? What is it that you can do today to get closer to the fulfillment of that future? To get closer to the manifestation of the future? What are you doing today? What are you giving today? Remember why you had to let some people go. Remember why you're working so hard towards this thing. You're pressing, you're pushing, you're clawing, you're dragging yourself through mud and through murky water. Come on, remember why you're doing what you're doing. It may be difficult. It may seem impossible. The moment that you discover why you're here, spend the rest of your life Execute. There are going to be times where you give everything you have. And everything that you have is not enough. Push through the pain. Push through the anguish. Push through the brokenness. Do not stop. It's the no quit mentality. Wherever you are now is not where you're going to end up. You are special, and you've been designed to change the world. So many of us want so many different things, and our life is filled with entertainment and recreation and people 
that we have not appraised? Have you appraised your connections? Have you done a scrupulous evaluation of everyone in your life? Are they assets or are they liabilities? Yes, you want the future, but what's your plan? And then the moment that you create the plan and you've ironed out all the kinks and you're crystal clear and you've got this plan, you've got this aim, this target, then you gotta stay committed. With tears in your eyes, you gotta be committed when your brain is hurting. You gotta be committed when you haven't gotten sleep in a few days. You gotta be committed. You gotta plow through that depression, that heaviness, that weariness and you gotta cling to the joy of the thought of the future that if you finish this course, then there is a reward at the end of this pain. You may feel as though you are not able to breathe now. You may be inundated with responsibility and it seems as though there is no way out of this. You have to be grateful for the ground that you've gained and guard the ground that you've gained. Celebrate the small wins. If we keep looking at the big picture, if we keep looking at the end game, if that's all we fix our eyes on, then we'll get off kilter, we'll lose our footing and we'll walk around discouraged because you're not gonna just wake up in one day and fulfill destiny. It's the process that's perfecting us. It's the ins and the outs and the nuances. It's the song and the dance between destiny and the journey and the process and the promise. And we've gotta learn how to execute the day. Give us this day. We've gotta learn how to execute the day. Get you conquer the day. I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And so we've got to celebrate the small wins, those mental wins, those emotional wins, those relational wins, those financial wins, those spiritual wins. We've got, we've got to celebrate, celebrate. And then we've got to be kind, not only to others throughout our process, but we've got to be kind to ourselves. The problem with many of us is that we're not kind to ourselves. Be kind to yourself. You can be assertive, you can be direct, you can be firm, but you can have a little empathy and a little kindness, not only on others, but on yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, you are not going to always feel like doing what you were designed to do, okay? And so we've got to condition ourselves for the stretch. With gratitude, we're going to need that coupled with patience. The future takes time to manifest. The future takes time because you are beautifully equipped to get the results you are currently getting and there are some bigger results that you are after and in order to get those results, in order to manifest that very specific future, you're going to have to acquire a different set of skills, a different work mentality. It's going to require you to become a different version of yourself. Elevation is all over you. Okay, next, you gotta seize the opportunity. There are so many opportunities for you to grow, so many opportunities for you to learn, so many opportunities for you to share, for you to give, for you to understand, for you to think, for you to be quiet, for you to speak. And you've gotta know when to do, what to do, why to do. This is the paradigm of the future. The future has a specific paradigm that you have to execute, you have to walk in this. You're going to have to move from limited beliefs and you're gonna to have to move into limitless believing. You have to know your boundaries, establish your guardrails. You gotta know your weaknesses and your strengths. Do not stop! It's the no quit mentality! I wanna to talk to someone out there who is thinking about quitting and giving up. This is for you. There are going to be times when you are down and you feel that you are alone. There are going to be times when darkness is going to blind you from your truth. But how much pain can you endure? Please. Don't give up. 
Remember this. When it gets tough, you got to get a little tougher. Pain will push you beyond your threshold. Will remind you that you are still alive. You feel like you can't carry on. Your body is getting a little numb. Your muscles feel weakened. There are going to be some setbacks, but that doesn't mean you can't come back. Put yourself back together if you're down. Lift yourself up once again. Take a moment and just look up. I know that you feel like you're not strong enough right now, but I'm here to let you know Anything that is in your way, you have the ability to move it out of your way. You wonder why is it hurting so bad? Because you've given so much of yourself. Maybe this pain wasn't my enemy. Maybe this pain was building me up. So when it gets tough, you get tougher. It's your turn. You shouldn't feel guilty. It's your turn. It's your time. You've blessed everybody else. You've set everybody else for success. You've compromised you for them and look where you are. It's time for you. And so for a lot of you, you're not doing nothing because you don't have any purpose right now. You don't have a sense of purpose. You're not waking up for nobody. And I need you to get that engine. I need that drive because you know what to do. You, you're the right person to do it, but you just can't seem to get out of bed. You can't seem to do what you're supposed to do. Every time you come up against a trial or a tribulation, you let it stop. You got to find your why and your why is what's going to start you. And the problem with some of you in this room you don't have no drive. You ain't got nothing pushing you. You ain't got no reason for waking up in the morning. You ain't got no reason for pushing past that pain. You have no reason. You better find one before you get out of here today. You better go inside. You still looking outside for the stuff that's already inside. You still looking for someone to save you when you already your superhero. You looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you. It's not an option. And the reason why some of you are not where you're supposed to be, you've given yourself an option. You've given yourself an out. You've given yourself an excuse. You've given yourself room not to do it, but you have what it takes. Give me some energy, I can! I, can. I will! I, I must! I must! Come on, I can! I can. Come on, I will! I, I, will. I, must. I must! I can! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's go! I can means I have the ability to do it. I got what it take. I have the ability to do it. I will. I have the willpower to make it happen. I must. My wife needs me. I must. My son needs me. I must. My daughter needs me. We can, we will, and we must get through this. Let's go. I want to ask you a question. Seriously. This is going to be hard because some of you young and you like still worried about what people think about you so you don't want to be honest in front of people. I want you to think about what level you want. Are you giving 90, 80, 70? Let's see what I'm saying for a minute. It's like I gave everything I got. I have no more to give. Like I really put 120 into this. So raise your hand if you're giving 120. Like I ain't got no more to give, E. E, I'm giving, I'm giving 100, E. I know I got, I'm just doing at least what coach want me to do. I'm doing everything coach want me to do. I'm giving about 90%, E, let me be real. I'm giving about 90%, let me see your hand. Of my effort, let me see your hands. I'm giving about 80%, let me see your hand. 70%, let me see your hand. I need you for you to admit where you are. 
What is it going to take for you to get every single thing you got? What is that going to take? It's consistency. And so I got to go to bed at a certain time. I got to wake up at a certain time. There's certain things I can't eat, certain things I can't watch, certain things I can't do. And I'm talking about that grind. I got an opportunity. You got an opportunity. So here's the deal. When you have an opportunity, why would you give 80% when you have an opportunity? Somebody answer that for me. Y'all talk. Why would you give 80%, 70%? Why wouldn't you always give 120%? This right here, for a lot of y'all, y'all ain't got no discipline, it's killing you. It's killing you. And you don't even realize it's killing you. It's killing you. If you're not giving 120, I'm not mad at you. My job is not to dog you out. Because once we go back out, my goal is to come here and take you to that next level. From today on, you play whatever your best game is, you play that level every single time. It doesn't mean you're going to score every time, but the effort has it. You can always give 120% effort. Life going to go on regardless. Mental toughness. It is in those times we have to be stronger than we've ever been before. Why? Because they need us more than they ever needed us before. I just want to make sure that the life we got left, that is sweeter than the life that if I wasn't focused and I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And we're going to make it the best possible. It's your life. You got it. What you going to do with it? I want to ask you a question. Seriously. How many of y'all in this room, you like, yo, E, it is my life, but I ain't been in control of it as much as I should be in control of it. And after the day, I'm taking more control of it. Let me see your hand. Be honest with me. Come on, let me see your hands. And so you looked up to who when you played ball? Like, who were the people you looked up to? Kobe. 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 LeBron. CP. D-Wade. Kobe. I, I was the same thing with me with Dr. Martin Luther King. In Washington, like all those people, I got a dream. When I saw Malcolm, like, boom. And I saw hundreds of black men, boom. Like, let's go. I'm like, like, I could do that. And then when I found out I could make money doing it and I could take care of my family, I was like, showtime. Like, you only got one shot, E. So hear what I'm saying. Opportunity. You have an opportunity of a lifetime. When you understand you have an opportunity, you, just, you play a little different. Here's what I want to tell you. If you're going to get it, you're going to have to have that dog. You're going to have to have that dog. You're going to have to be that dude that say, I'm not just going with skills. There's a, there's a one type of dude who feel like because he's gifted that it's just an automatic role for him. And let me tell y'all something. You are gifted, but you better humble yourself. You got skill and you got will. Two total different things. You were born with certain things, but to get to the next level, and not just get to the next level, to stay at the next level, you got to have will when you get to that next level. So when you play, you have to compete. It's sports. It's basketball. Why wouldn't you give 120%? Talk to me. What would, what would make you not give 120%? You got to answer it. You play that level every single time. It doesn't mean you're going to score every time, but the effort has it. You can always give 120% effort. You can't dictate if the ball going to always go in. You can't dictate what kind of game you're going to have. You can't dictate how your body is going to respond to moving around. But you can dictate your what? You can dictate your... Good, you can dictate your, you can always give 120% effort. Like, here's the deal, when y'all go play tonight, tomorrow, my goal is for you to go 120. So you're gonna have the right people in here helping y'all, but if you do giving me 70, 80, 90, you ain't giving me 120, you're not gonna get out of this experience what you're supposed to get out. That's my job. Why don't you always give 120% effort? It's your turn. I know the feeling. No, this not that fake lion, tigers, and bears motivation. This that growing up in the slums, watching your mom nod on the couch as you go to school. We want more. We want more out of this life. And if you're not willing to give that to us, we're going to take it. To have an under 
dog mentality. Like everybody's already counted you out. Like everybody's already told you, you don't have what it takes. You don't measure up. That what you started, you will not finish. Claw your way into your future. Fight for your goal. Give it everything you have because you have nothing to lose. Life's gonna hit you in your mouth and you gotta do me a huge favor. Your why has to be greater than that knocked out. And I love it, Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. It was almost a 10 count. He was stumbling, they were four, three, two, one, and ding, 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 saved by the bell. He goes to his corner, the whole world is like, up. Oh, that's it. Once he comes back out, that's it. Mike's gonna just hammer him. And exactly that, Mike Tyson came out like, I got him. I got this kid up against the rope. Listen to me, many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope. You can't give up, you can't give in. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And if life's got you backed up, I need you to do what Buster Douglas did. Buster Douglas start fighting back. What an uppercut by Douglas, and down goes Tyson. The world was shocked. <gasps> Goliath has been knocked down. What happened? And they went to Buster Douglas and they asked Buster Douglas simply like, what happened? And Buster Douglas said, listen to me, it's real simple. Before my mother died, she told the whole world that I was going to be Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, my mother died. Buster Douglas had, he had a decision to make. When his mother died, he could die with his mother, or he made a decision, I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was greater than that punch. His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is, and your why isn't strong, you're gonna get knocked out every single day. A man is not a man by his age. A man is a man by his experiences. What he goes through. What he fights through. That's what makes a warrior. That's what makes the greatest of all time. I will end my life in a bottomless pit. I'm gonna rise and I'm gonna show the world that greatness is obtained by the man that never stopped pushing. I believe and I stand on it to this day. As long as the sun is shining on my face and not on my grave, I got an opportunity of a lifetime. When you fight as if you are already dead, you are without restraint. You are a disruptor. You break all the rules. Because you have nothing to lose, you are desperate for resurrection. And you will do anything that is required to accomplish the goal you are setting out to achieve. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, because Bruce Lee said it best, a warrior is an average person with laser-like focus. A warrior is an average person with laser-like focus. Don't even worry about your ability. Don't you worry about opportunity. I need you to be a warrior right now and let your work get your opportunity. Let your work get your praise. Let your work open up doors. Let your work get people paying attention. Let your work get the whole world to notice. You gotta work. Stop thinking. Stop procrastinating. And you gotta work. I need you to rise up to fulfill your dreams. Rise up and attack your goals. There's no time to sleep. No time to nap. No time to waste. If you fall asleep, wake up and rise up again. You should work so hard that you collapse in the bed at night. Sometimes in the afternoon you're so weary from grinding that your body just collapses. That's okay. Have sweet sleep, but when you wake up, grind again. Now is your time. Now is your season. Now is the moment to capture the vision. To win any battle, you must fight as if you are already dead. You better go inside. You still looking outside for the stuff that's already inside. You still looking for someone to save you when you are already your superhero. You looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you. You don't believe that you have the potential and the capability to be the best of yourself. So why? You just sit back and you wait for somebody to pat you on the shoulder and say it's okay. At least you gave it your best. Your best ain't good enough. Your best don't work. 
You need to go beyond your best. You need to go beyond the level. You need to let the world know that you exist. You need to let the world know that you made different. You're built different. You're stronger. You're more passionate. You believe in yourself. When the rest of the world shuts you down, you woke up the next day and you said, I got this. I do this. I breathe this. I am this. You can't stop me. Here's what success is all about. You need these three things. Are you ready? You need skill set, mindset, and opportunity. You need to rise up and understand what success is all about. Skill set, work on your skill. Mindset, work on your mentality, baby, and your opportunity will come. There will always be a million reasons to say no. A million reasons to play it safe. A million reasons to stay comfortable. But you won't achieve your dreams staying in your comfort zone. You won't accomplish your goals by living in that glass cage you built around you that limits you from realizing your potential. So take the hammer, smash the glass, and jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. You'll learn to fly before you fall. If you are listening to this and feeling scared, you should feel scared. Accomplishing a dream isn't, nor should it ever be easy. You know some individuals like it easy. They like it put on a pedestal for them. But some of us gotta grind. We gotta dig. We gotta make it happen for ourselves. You see, no, we never did it for the money. We did it to stop the blood. We did it to stop the pain. We did it to turn the showers into sunshine. We won't stop until our family no longer struggles. We won't stop until we're number one. This will not be easy, but in the end, you will win. And you know why I'm so passionate? Because the rest of the world don't understand my passion. The other world don't want my passion. They think my passion is too much. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. You know why? Because passion is what makes me who I am today. What are you? And what are you prepared to do? Are you prepared to fight? Are you prepared to bleed? Are you prepared to work? It's not an option. And the reason why some of you are not where you're supposed to be, you've given yourself an option. You've given yourself an out. You've given yourself an excuse. You've given yourself room not to do it. I'm not speaking no more to entertain. I'm not speaking to help people. I'm speaking so my girl never have to go back to work again. I'm speaking so that the MS don't kill her. I got a different try. I got a different why. I got to make this $1.8 million so my girl can quit for the rest of her life. I'm taking all gigs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the problem with some of you in this room, you don't have no drive. You ain't got nothing pushing you. You ain't got no reason for waking up in the morning. You ain't got no reason for pushing past that pain. You have no reason. You better find one before you get out of here today. Our lives are so short. There is no time to waste. I get up at three because it's silent. It's easier to be focused when the environment is focused. Most of you wake up and you try to make money. Listen to me. If you would make you, money would come to you. Okay, you missed that whole thing I just said. If you would make you a better person, you'd make more money. Now, watch what I do. The way people spend their money or treat their money is how I treat my time. All right, let me explain what I mean to you. I make sure that every single day in that 24 hour period that I'm getting a whole bunch of wins. So I'm supposed to be doing this at this time, doing this at this time, doing this at this time, doing this at this time. The problem with most of you, you waking up and you worshiping money. Man, I was in the back with Cole. Cole was like, E, I got this opportunity for you. I got this opportunity. I got this opportunity. When you become number one, you have to chase opportunities. So I became number one, not meaning I'm better than nobody else. It means I just mastered my craft to the point that I know what I do that don't nobody else do. I know that I have a way of doing in this industry what nobody else does. And I've picked out in this industry, I've crafted out my own room. And your problem is 
You have 50% knocking on doors trying to get the result, somebody at 100%. And you're wondering why it ain't working. Because while you're doing what they're doing, you're not they are. So why do I put more emphasis on time than I put on money? Because they print money. They don't print time. So I'm going to say it one more time. You are worshiping the thing that they make every day. They don't make time every day. Ain't nobody print time. I ain't, I ain't met them yet. I ain't met no billionaire. I ain't met no trillionaire. I ain't met no institution. I ain't met no company. I ain't met nobody print money. So why are you spending more time on the thing they print every day than the thing, you know why? Because you're not developing and you're following other people. When you understand that the real thing is time and you ain't got a lot of it, you start focusing on your time and when you get your time right, money will come. Some people go to Dubai once every 10 years. I'm going every other month. Why? When you master yourself, you put yourself in a position that a lot of people can't do what you do and then you become rare and diamonds are rare. That's why they cost so much. If you would become rare, you just like everybody else. You look just like that. You act just like you just like everybody else. When you become you and you become rare, you become a... When you leave this room, you will take full ownership. And the reason why I say it's my fault, even when it's not my fault, because when I say it's your fault, I give you power. I give you control over my life. And I will never give another human control over my life. It's my fault. It's my problem. I'm coming up with a solution for it. Stop being average. Average people can't forgive. Average people can't let go. The greats, we do whatever it takes. Those who have a why can bear almost any high. How did I become number one in the world? Found out my wife had multiple sclerosis. They told my wife, listen to me, y'all. My wife's so beast mode. They told my wife she had MS and she's like, man. Then they told her she had to quit her job and she tear came out of her. The doctor said, you don't have insurance? And she said, yeah, I got insurance. She looked at her like, why are you crying if you got insurance? My wife's identity is in her waking up and working every day. She went to school to be a registered nurse. She went to school to do breast and cervical cancer. She didn't want to be at home. She didn't want to be no home wife. She literally went to school to be a nurse. She loves her job. But when they told her she had to quit, my wife's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, how much you make? She told me 5,000. I said, 5,000 times 12 is how much? 60 times 30 years how much? 1.8 million. I woke up every day hunting 1.8 1, 1, 1. million. I'm number one in the world, not because I'm a better speaker. I'm not number one in the world because I, I look the best, because I dress the best. I'm not number one because my, my, my enunciation is the best, because I use the best words, because I got the best sentence structure, because I come from the best background. I, got, I, made, I became number one because I woke up and I hunted down the 1.8 mil so my wife would never have to work again. If you're waking up every day and you want a Rolls Royce, you ain't about to beat me. If you're waking up for a Bentley, you ain't about to beat me. If you're waking up for a gold chain, you ain't about to beat me. If you woke up for a Rolling, you ain't about to beat me because you're going after material stuff. I'm going after my food. I'm going after my baby. I'm going after my high school sweetheart. I'm going after my kids so they can see their mama and their mama don't die. I'm making sure their mama don't get in a wheelchair if I can help you. If their mama don't lose her sight, if I can help it. If her mama don't lose her memory. So I start studying MS like I had it. I start studying MS. Your problem is you're not studying this product like it, like your life down on it. Like your life depend on it. You playing with this product. You know what? You like the people that work for me that want to check. And they never end up getting it. But the people who own, who work for my company, act like they own it. Wake up every single day making sure she don't have to go back to work. So watch this. I started studying and I found out two things. One is stress. So I had to take her out of a stressful situation. And then the other thing was vitamin D. And I literally, people say, bro, why you move to Southern California? Because my wife got it, man. I, I literally type what's the best place in the world for vitamin D. Southern California. What's the best temperature in the world in the United States of America? San Diego, California. It don't never, it don't go... 9900 and then back down it's right there I said San Diego I'm hunting down you're moving to San Diego why I don't care about San Diego 
my why, my wife. And the first year, last year, we were in San Diego. My wife said to me, when we went back to Michigan, when the summer came, my wife said, you know something? I said, what? She said, I never took a nap in California. I said, what you mean by that? She said, the sun energizes and I never needed to take a nap. You gonna come after me. The reason why most of you can't do what you do, you can keep getting knocked down, you keep quitting, because whatever your why is, it ain't stronger than the beat down to take. Whatever the beat down, whatever life is throwing at you, whatever punches is blowing, you, whatever's happening, it ain't that, it ain't deep enough for you to wake up. Like you getting punched and you feel that pain and you like, ain't no need to get up. No, and I feel you. You need to stay down, cause life gonna beat you. You talking about making millions? Life gonna beat you down. You talking about making millions, multi millions, billions? Life gonna beat you down. So, so when you feel the pain and you get knocked down, stay down. But if you got a why that's deeper than your pain, every trial, every tribulation, I will my way through it. I don't care if it's cancer. I will my way through it. I don't care if it's MS, I will my way through it. I don't care if I'm struggling in school and I'm trying to get a degree, I will my way through it. I don't care if you fail the boards, go again. I don't care if you fail the law exam, go again, will your way through it. Some things you can skill yourself through, some stuff you gotta will your way through. Without a vision, there's no direction. Without direction, there's no progress. Reason why you're struggling getting up because you don't have nothing to get up for. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what you've been called to do, what you've been called to accomplish, what you've been destined to build. It's time to take a deep dive into the deeper parts of yourself, the parts of you that nobody sees. When you take something personal, it gets personal. I'm not just putting on the front. I'm not just here in public to make you smile and applaud me and support me and make comments and share my video. I'm not here. I make this thing personal. Everything that I do in public, I've done it in private. And so I'm just asking you, don't just scream on a stage or be connected to millionaires or strive to be a CEO or an investor or a politician or an athlete or a musician or a singer. I'm just wondering, can you conquer in the dark? When you make it personal, what you do behind closed doors matters. So I'm just wondering when you're gonna make it personal. And you're gonna make it about what it looks like that nobody sees. The part of you that nobody sees, where's your integrity behind the scenes? Come on, where are your values behind the scenes? What do your habits look like behind the scenes? Come on, what kind of work are you putting in behind the scenes? Come on, drop down and give me 50. Come on, write it again. Come on, believe it again. Come on, sing again, record the song again. Come on, I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that musician. Come on, who are you out there? That philosopher, that engineer, that thought leader, that critical thinker, come on, that captain of industry, I'm talking to you when your personal life lines up with your purpose. Then public authority is yours. You want influence? I'm not talking about just fame. I'm talking about influence, the power to change people's lives. Can you stretch yourself? Can you condition yourself? Come on, can you believe again? Can you see it again? Can you write again? Can you make this thing personal? That it doesn't start with the people connected to you. It starts with you. It doesn't even start with your past. It starts with where you are and where you're going. Can you look ahead? Can you stretch for it? Can you condition yourself? Can you prepare yourself for the next thing? Come on, make it personal. It doesn't start with everybody. It starts with me because people will leave you for dead. And then what's your why? What did God put in you? Release it to the world. If it's going to be personal, make it personal. Don't just be great in public, be great in private. What you do in dark, if I pulled up your search history, what would I find? Would you still be an example to the world? If I went through your closet, if I went through your basement, if I went through your attic, if I went through your center council, if I went through your house, how personal is your purpose? Every single day, you are either losing ground or gaining ground. The choice is yours. But this time, make it personal. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna accomplish it, 
If you're gonna achieve it, even if you're confused and it's cold and it looks crazy, and you're gonna need to know the difference between contribution and commitment, because they're two very different things. See, everybody wants to contribute to destiny, but nobody wants to be committed to destiny. You wanna to contribute to the idea that you can be something. You wanna to contribute to the idea that something's gonna come of the sacrifice that you have made but you have not sacrificed, you have not suffered, you are not committed. When you are committed, you give everything you have. Every single week, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, 720 hours a month, you are beating on your craft. Even when you're at work, you're dreaming, you're thinking, you're vision casting. You're writing it down, making it play, communicating to your destiny connections so that it can become a reality. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hands. But the question I want to answer is, are you committed? I'm just wondering if you are bold enough, daring enough, if you can believe in your dream again, if you can get committed. See, when you get personal, when you make it personal, everything changes. Because you see, you made it about your girlfriend last time. You made it about your boyfriend last time. You made it about your kids last time. And your kids started acting up and then you let the dream go. It's got to start with you and God first. Listen, God put a gift inside of everybody and it's our responsibility to release it to the world. This time is personal. So do it for your loved ones, do it for your wife, do it for your husband, do it for your children, do it for generations to come. Come on, after you're dead and gone, what will they say about what you did? Yes, there's so many people depending on you, but it's gotta start with you and the man upstairs. What he put in you, make it personal. Everything in my life breathes and eats this purpose that I have. I gotta make it personal, it's, it's, it starts with me. When it starts with me, it ends with me. I don't know where you are in your game of life. You may be in your third quarter, you may be in your fourth quarter. Come on, you're not gonna live forever, not in this world, come on. You may be in your first quarter, your, your second half, and this time it's gotta be personal. See, last time you were just running through the plays. Last time you were just running the songs that you rehearsed in rehearsal. Last time you were just going through the motions and you got numb, come on, and you got tired and weary, and now you're broken and bitter and angry because you lost. And I'm just wondering if you're courageous enough, bold enough, if you have enough faith, come on, if you have enough inside of you resilience to come back to the scene and make it personal. It's rain, sleet, or snow, keep building. And so this time it's gotta be personal. And you may not feel qualified. You may not feel like you are educated enough. You may not feel like you're connected enough. You may not think that enough people are aware of you, cognizant of you, because you don't have a blue check and you're not a celebrity yet. But you gotta work hard in silence. You gotta work when nobody's watching. You gotta sacrifice behind the scenes. You gotta take it personal. When you take it personal, your private life changes. Everybody wants public authority, but nobody wants private discipline. When your habits change behind the scenes, when your private life begins to shift, when you put aside the things that are not serving you, if you can make it personal, it's personal. It doesn't start with them and they. It starts with me. It starts with me. So make it personal. Let yourself go, fall free into it. Step into it, you are worthy. You are an unrepeatable miracle and there is none like you in all the earth. There will never be another you. Your DNA, your fingerprint, come on. Your gait, your presence, your authenticity, come on, you're special. You're special and you're necessary. Do you just want to win? Or are you absolutely committed? Because when you are committed, when you have made the decision that I am going to win, it's no longer a want, it is a must. 
And when something becomes a must, when you become obsessed with what you've been called to do, you will sacrifice. People that are committed are willing to make the sacrifices. And so ask yourself the question, have you sacrificed everything? Are you paying the price? You gotta pay the price for what you want. Everything in your future comes at a cost. I am acquainted with loss, pain, lack, and famine. I wanna win now. Because winning has everything to do with your mentality. It has everything to do with how you talk, how you walk, how you think, how you overcome. Winning is not just a crown or a trophy. It is the process. It is who I am becoming. And that is how we win. If you are going to hit your goal, and if you're going to punch through your targets, you have got to see differently. You have got to think differently. You are going to have to connect differently. You are going to have to communicate differently. One day, I just decided I'm going to raise my standards. Make a decision. Raise your expectations. You got to go to the next level. There's always another level. You've been in this place of misery long enough. It's time to win. There is no other option. Winning is a non-negotiable. It's what I do. And all of a sudden, wham! No longer is it just what you do. It is who you have become. Because there are some people that win, and then there are winners. There are people who win, there are people who lose, and there are people who are winners. This ain't just something I do, it is who I have become. I am a winner.